Hi, I'm Dylan Richards. In New York, we have the United Nations and the best food from all over the world. Follow me as I search for the healthiest food in the five boroughs on Dylan's Lunchbox. Very soon. Pop that Juices and the oranges can start to come out of it. Flagship cheese. Here's your burger. Slide the opposite leg. I'm Tanya Sokobat for Dylan's Lunchbox. And how you got into organic farming? About American cuisine. Who doesn't love Italian food? Chinese food is one of the oldest cuisines in the world. We're here to find out what's in your lunchbox. This week, I'm going to learn how to do dairy right. I'm going to visit Beecher's Cheese to learn how great cheese is made, Riney Brook to get the skinny on healthy milk, and find out about sustainable local sources of dairy. So let's check it out. So today I'm craving cheese. I decided to go down to the Flatiron District to one of my favorite handcrafted cheese shops, Beecher's. I'm excited to see what the cheese making process is all about and even get a taste for myself. So I hear we're making cheddar cheese today. What's the process behind it? Well, first we start with milk. And obviously good milk is the foundation of all cheese making. Is your milk local or organic? Our milk is local and we use no antibiotics or growth hormones in our cows. We get it fresh every day from upstate. And the first step is adding culture. And culture is basically bacteria that is going to start acidifying the milk. Mm -hmm. Once it starts acidifying, we're going to add enzymes. Those enzymes are going to clot the milk and turn it into curds and whey. And we're going to separate those curds from our whey and let them mat together. What makes a cheddar process different from other cheese processes? Well, no other cheese processes do the cheddaring step, which is matting the curd right. into loaves and then flipping and stacking. As we flip and stack, they're gonna stretch and also lose a lot of moisture, and that's gonna create the cheddar. What are some health benefits of cheese? Well, cheese has a lot of health benefits which people don't realize. It's almost a whole food. Cheese has great calcium, a lot of minerals, has a really great source of protein. The only thing it really is missing is vitamins. If that vitamins, it'd be pretty close to being a whole food. So how long does the cheese process take? Our process takes about six hours, and we do it twice a day, so it spans about 12 hours. So can we see what it's all about? Yeah, when we suit up and go downstairs. All right. So this is fresh milk that's coming this morning straight from the farm. And as this fat fills, eventually we're gonna add our culture to it, which is gonna start our cheese making process. It's really the foundation of all cheese making. So what are they doing right here? Right now they're separating the curd from the whey and we're draining off all of the moisture. And as they're doing that, the curd is gonna start matting together into clumps. So they do it by hand? We do it all by hand. Yep, we do it basically the old-fashioned way. It's really important for cheddar to be a very low moisture cheese, so all of the way, which is moisture, we want to get out. So now we're having it flushed out of the vat, and then we're going to go into our cheddaring process, which is going to be cutting this curd into slabs, and those slabs are going to be flipped and constantly stacked on top of each other, and doing that is going to stretch out all the moisture. And the elasticity of that curd, plus the low moisture, is what makes cheddar really unique. We're just starting to square it off. This is gonna be the beginning of the cheddaring process. We have a trench that runs down the middle. So the first thing we're gonna do after we square off our edges is take everything out of the middle so that each side can drain. Right. Every other step we do on this occurs in 15 minute increments. And from that point on, we're then going to fold one half of this over okay. and create blocks. Those blocks will be turned into our cheddar loaves. And then we're gonna start flipping and stacking those. You take a lot of pride in sanitation. Why is it so important? This is something that's going to age for 18 months on a shelf before anybody even eats it. Right. If there's any slip up in our sanitation process, you could have a lot of bad bugs developed into your product by that time. So we always need to not only wash our hands, sanitize our hands, wash and sanitize our equipment, keep our floor immaculate. Everything has to be completely clean and spotless for this to work. So what treat do we have here? This is 
our Beaches flagship cheese in all of its stages of life. Wow. First we have our fresh flagship curds. Okay. Those are salted right over the vat. Those were just like you saw in the vat in the room. Long. And that's flagship reserve. So that is our cheddar done in a slightly different fashion. Uh, as it ages, we open air age it. We actually age it for less time, but it ends up a little bit more of a drier product. It's amazing how the taste progresses over time. That's, a lot that's more incredible. Intense. If you're looking for some of the best cheese in New York City, be sure to stop by Beecher's Cheese. Whether it's to get some of their signature flagship or maybe even a delicious sandwich, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Hi, I'm Stephanie Sachs, culinary nutritionist. I'm a trained chef, I have a master's in nutrition, and I'm a certified nutrition specialist. Today, we're here to talk about one of my most favorite, favorite spices, ginger. Now, we call it an herb or we call it a spice. Um, it's really a root, and uh, it is one of the primary natural antibiotics. Okay, it's also great for nausea. I like to slip ginger in anything and everything that I possibly can, especially when my kids are sick or when I'm sick. Um, and there are many ways you can do it. Today what we're gonna make is a uh, banana ginger ice cream, believe it or not. It's a great way to slip ginger in to a really yummy dish. So here we have our ginger. Um, I'm gonna take a piece off here, cut the little nuts off. There are many ways that you can um, extract ginger juice or cut your ginger. Simply, I'm just gonna use my knife. You can use a ceramic ginger grater. You can use a plane, which is um, typically one of those metal rods or stainless steel rods that we use uh, for Parmesan cheese. So you can use that very simply for ginger. So I'm just gonna take some of the skin off here, like so. Okay. And I'm gonna slice it up. You don't want to put too much ginger in because it can be very spicy. Uh, and sometimes the kids don't love the spice. Although ginger is going in to the food processor here, which is great to have a mini Cuisinart, roughly $40. Um, just a great tool to make dips, to make banana ice cream, um, to make marinades. I like to mince the ginger a bit because it can be kind of tough. So we'll put the ginger in like so. We have our bananas that have been peeled and frozen. So uh, you don't want to freeze your bananas with the peel on because then it's very hard, obviously, to get the peel off. So you want to do it that way, uh, peel them first. And then we've got a little bit of coconut milk. Okay, and I keep a little maple syrup on hand. Depending on the sweetness of the bananas, sometimes you don't even need it. So let's see how this You can see the consistency, very light, very fluffy. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, perfect. The perfect marriage of sweetness with ginger, with a little coconut, and we didn't even have to add any sugar because uh, sweet enough, delicious. We now know that dairy products are good for us, but did you know they can help prevent certain diseases? Drinking milk regularly can help prevent calcium deficiencies that lead to osteoporosis. They can also, along with lots of fruits and veggies, prevent high blood pressure. These products are also known to lower the risk of colon cancer and type 2 diabetes. So get your dairy on and fight disease.
I love milk. It's a great source of calcium and other important nutrients to growth. So today, I've come to the milk experts at Ronnie Brook Milk Bar in Manhattan. They're gonna teach me not only the science behind milk, but how to make an awesome chocolate milkshake from some of their local and organic milk. So let's check this out. Why open a store specializing in milk? Well, um, first of all, Ronnie Brook makes different kind of milk. Right. The milk is pasteurized, but it's unhomogenized, which means usually what happens in the process of making the milk, uh, they break all the fat and mix okay. everything in, 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 into one. We leave some fat in the milk, so it, the cream itself is richer. So what are the different types of milk? Well, today we have uh, three kinds. We have the skim, which is zero fat. We have the low, which is 1%, and we have the full fat, the cream line, which is what we use to for the 3%. Also, we have half and half and heavy cream, right. which is also, of course, made of milk. But today, what we usually buy in the supermarket is those three kinds of milks. So what's the most popular item at Ronnie Brook Milk Bar? From the shakes, I would uh, definitely say chocolate or vanilla. Chocolate. Or vanilla. Um, but from the custom ones, with no doubt, it will always be the uh, black and white. It's the right. first shake ever <laughs> mixed together to be it's uh, vanilla ice cream and chocolate syrup. Of course, the milk and uh, blend it all together. And you're more than welcome to uh, make one with me. So this is the kingdom. This is where we make the shakes. Why is it important for a milk to be organic? Well, today what happens in the process, a lot of uh, companies that produce milk, they actually add uh, growth hormones or, egg, uh, or uh, extra vitamin D. We don't add white color to the skin. Yep. We don't add vitamin D. We don't add uh, growth hormones. Um, so it's all literally natural. I'm excited to try uh, the chocolate milkshake out. Let's get down to business. Let's do it now. Put up your sleeves okay. and uh, tell me what flavor you want to try. Chocolate. Chocolate, yep. All right, so meet your Use friend okay. and meet the blender. You get the new one, that's not fair. I know the tricks, what do you expect? So give me your last one. Yeah, really good. There we go. Okay, now, you got ice cream. Yep, milk. Oh, take it, got the milk. Two ingredients. So ice how cream, much of it? Milk. Now, you see we have the eight here and the yep. 16. So imagine that there's like 12 or 13, so pour the milk. Perfect. That's it. And the real deal. That is the real deal. It's yours and Joy. Voila. This milkshake is amazing. It's so rich, thick, it's perfect. It's probably my favorite milkshake in New York City. Thank you very much. It's uh, when you take great milk and phenomenal ice cream and you mix it together. Well, it's true. You know it's, it's absolutely amazing. If you're looking for the ultimate milkshake or just need to pick up some milk on the way home, be sure to stop by Ronnie Brook Milk Bar with some of the freshest milk in Manhattan. You'll wish you were a kid again. One of the key features of French cuisine is its small portion size, especially when compared with the food here in the United States. Instead of large portions, the French take their meals in several courses. This allows them to eat smaller portions and not fill up too much. Statistically speaking, the results are impressive. Only 8% of the French people are overweight, while about 50% of Americans are overweight. This is despite the fact that the French consume much more butter, cheese, and pork than we do. Much of the fat in these products are easily digestible. By getting the right fats and the right portion size, you too can stay thin like the French. I guess what they say is true, less is more. I'm with Amanda from Amanda Russell TV at Pedal NYC where we're going to be hopping. 
Whatever. <laughs> That's right, we're gonna be hopping for a workout. Dylan, we're calling this one Bugs Bunny. Okay. So, so that he can feel like very masculine. Um, so what we're gonna do is like, like standing long jump, you're gonna take one big leap forward and then two small hops back. So it's forward, back, back. Ready? Forward, back, back. And forward, back, back. And you can use your arms for momentum. We're all track stars again and I think Dylan wins the gold medal. And let's do, that's it. And three more. Last two. And one. I think he's got some height on me. Nice job. So you can do two or three rounds of about 10. Mix it in with the rest of your workout and you should see some results very soon. So this is a one-legged toe touches. So what you're, it's a lot harder than it looks. Try it, trust me. Um, so what you're gonna do, <laughs> you can vouch for this. So you bring one leg up, standing on one leg all your weight, and you're gonna try to keep your back straight, everything tight through here, and you're just going to bend and touch. And up, yes, bouncing act, and slowly lower. It's not about how fast you can do them. And touch, this is, Great for your hamstrings as well. And aim for 10 to 12, and then we switch sides. And balance it out, get it on the other side. And down, you can even hold little weights in your hands to make it a little more challenging. Um, I really recommend really working on your balance first. And up, oh, and I <laughs> So you might want to grab a wall when you're first beginning or whatever. Um, it doesn't matter how many times you fall. The idea is just to keep coming back to it. This is really good for athletes for coordination and balance and agility. You don't even have to jump in the pool to go swimming. All you have to do is lay on your ground, find any flat space, your apartment, wherever, one place you can't do it is in the car, but we can get around that. So basically, you're gonna bring up your opposite arm and opposite leg and vice versa, just like you're doing a front crawl. So left arm, right leg, and then right arm, left leg, and switch. So it's up, switch, up, and then you can take it up to tempo like you're going swimming, like this. And I ch shoot for like 20 each side. Um, it gets really deeply into the back, so you're gonna aim for that nice, long, lean line down your back. Um, you can also really feel it in the glutes, the hip, the bum, the thigh region, the back of the thighs. And five more. Come on, Dylan, don't give up on me now. Four, three, two, and one. And your, uh, your back side will be looking pretty good in no time. <laughs> Dairy products are essential to a healthy diet. The carbohydrates, fats, and proteins in these products are well balanced. They provide a good source of vitamin A, vitamin D, and B12. Dairy products are also an important source of nutrients such as calcium, riboflavin, phosphorus, and pantothenic acid. So I guess a glass of milk a day keeps the doctor away. I love ice cream, and today we have a special treat. Mark, the founder of the Raw Ice Cream Company, is gonna teach us how to make ice cream today. So what ice cream are we making? Chocolate. Awesome. So what do we need for our ice cream today? Um, this is a raw vegan ice cream, so we'll be using all raw ingredients. Coconut meat, cashews, agave nectar, water, salt, raw cacao, vanilla bean specks, and a small amount of vanilla extract. What inspired you to create a raw vegan ice cream? Well, I became a vegan a few years ago, and my two favorite foods before that were pizza and ice cream. Hmm. When I became vegan, I found no suitable ice cream substitutes. So 
Being that it was my favorite food, I set about creating something that was as good as regular ice cream. So let's start this process. Sounds great. We're gonna grab our uh, blender jar here and add in our ingredients. Why are we using two different chocolates? Chocolate is grown along the equator. Um, however, each different region of chocolate produces a different flavor. And we found that the combination of a Peruvian chocolate and um, Balinese chocolate provided the deep, dark, sweet flavor we were looking for. Great. Let's measure it out. OK. Quarter cup of the Bali. quarter cup of the Peruvian. And so that's our salt? Yeah, this is a um, salt actually from an ancient bed in Utah. Wow. The reason we use it is because um, ancient petrified salt hasn't been polluted by the plastics you find in the ocean today. So, and it's also laced with trace minerals, um, wow. which gives it that beautiful pink hue. This is just a dash of um, vanilla bean. And our last two ingredients will... Water and agave? Yeah, water and agave. And we're ready to blend. So how long does this process take? Until it's completely smooth. Probably five minutes. Now that the batter is ready, what's the next step? Well, the next step is freezing it down and turning it into ice cream. Conventional ice cream has a lot of animal fat, right. and coconut meat, as well as cashews, both contain plant fat. The fat is what says, hey, I'm delicious, <laughs> eat more of me uh, right. in the ice cream. So it's great that these two plant sources are molecularly similar um, to conventional ice cream in that capacity. Um, so we're ready to make the ice cream. So we put it back in? Yeah, let's put it back in. So how many servings are we going to get out of this? We're making about two servings right now. Um, and this is a raw food, so it's going to contain all the phytonutrients and antioxidants all the original plants contain, which means it's nutritionally superior to regular ice cream, which is just made of milk fat, eggs, and sugar. I mean. So is it ready yet? Yeah, it looks about ready. Let's shut it off. OK. OK, so let's taste it. Sounds good. So this is our chocolate. Yep. Yeah. This is the best way to eat ice cream. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to stop me from eating this. Eat the whole container. <laughs> we also encourage people to eat responsible portions, which is why we make right. it in such small containers. So even if you do eat the whole container, you're only eating about a cup of ice cream. So can we make a shake out of it? Absolutely. It's one of my favorite things to do. Or it's my favorite way to eat this ice cream. Uh, you dump the whole thing in there. Yep. Um, and then you add about... Water. Wow. Yeah, water instead of milk. Um, it's, it really doesn't need any other flavoring. You put about 20... You fill this container up about 20%. And you, you add that in. And then you Throw blend. Throw the top on. Throw the top on and blend. And that's it. Perfect. And the way I do this, scoop a mint. Voila. Bon appetit. We then. Awesome. Yeah. This will not be the last time I make this. Yeah, it won't be the last time I make it either. Oh. Not only is it dairy free, gluten free, and soy free, but it tastes so much better than conventional ice cream. I definitely recommend you going out and trying ice cream from the Raw Ice Cream Company.
Thanks for joining us for another episode of Dylan's Lunchbox. Today we've shown you how to make healthy dairy choices and where to find fresh milk and tasty cheese. Check out these links for more info on the places we've been today. Don't forget to tune in to next week's episode of Dylan's Lunchbox.